Hey there guys and welcome to part two of Beyond Training. So in part one we discussed how Bruce Wayne might use sleep and meditation and sunlight to recover and to energize himself so that he can push himself harder in the gym and to get by on less sleep. And of course this was just a bit of nerdy fun but the idea is that we're discussing how you can use lifestyle changes and hacks in order to push yourself harder not only in the gym but in life without burning out and I think that's something that a lot of us can relate to. The main takeaway I hope was that what you're doing outside of the gym is just as important as what you do in the gym. And in this part, we're gonna be talking about diet and nutrition, fasting, and how these strategies might also help us to go harder for longer and to recover better. So without further ado, let's talk about Bruce Wayne's diet. So first of all, we need to think about Bruce Wayne's diet, because of course, training has two stages. You have the training in the gym, and then you have the recovery, where you build back that tissue thicker and stronger. This is where the hypertrophy actually occurs. If you keep training hard and don't allow yourself the time or the fuel to recover, all you'll be doing is breaking yourself down more and more. So we need, first of all, lots of calories to make this happen. And author E. Paul Zaya, who wrote Becoming Batman, suggested that he would need to eat something in the region of 4,000 calories. That's assuming that he weighs 210 pounds with a height of six foot two inches. It does make a lot of sense. If you're big and if you do a lot of intense training and have a very busy schedule, then you need lots and lots of calories in order to make sure that A, you have the energy to do all those things, and B, you have the energy that you need to repair yourself. And by maintaining more of a caloric surplus, you'll be in a more anabolic state more of the time, meaning that you'll be repairing tissue rather than burning fat for fuel and potentially breaking down other tissues. There could be some benefits to being in a fasted state, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But for the most part, if you want to train as hard as possible and push yourself in other areas of your life, then you need to be getting lots of calories to make that happen. But the mistake is to think of food just as fuel, because of course, it's also a building block. You don't just eat in order to have enough energy to do things, your body also literally reconstitutes what you eat and uses it to rebuild your tissue, to produce enzymes, hormones, neurotransmitters. Literally every part of your body comes from what you eat. You recycle your entire body over and over again and the food you consume provides the raw building blocks that you need to do that. In fact, if you're taking lots of supplements to try and boost your performance in the gym and your recovery and to build more muscle, then really you should be getting that stuff from your food because the nutrients you find in food, they act like supplements, they act like power-ups, and they can do all sorts of amazing things for your body. You have your omega-3 found in tuna and a host of other sources, which improves cell membrane permeability, meaning that you can pass molecules and signals through the cell wall more easily and also helps protect it. You have vitamin D, we talked about that in part one, about how it can strengthen the bones, improve testosterone production, improve your sleep-wake cycles. And you get this from all kinds of foods that are naturally exposed to the sun, like mushrooms. Obviously, vitamins C and D are also fantastic for strengthening your immune system. You have calcium for strengthening your bones, but also your contraction strength. Lutein is fantastic for boosting energy. It also encourages brain plasticity. There are just so many different amazing properties to so many different nutrients. Everything you eat that comes from a natural source is gonna have some kind of profound beneficial effect for your body. This is where we can end up essentially chasing our tails though. If we take a reductionist approach and think these are all the things I need, oh man, I need to make sure I'm getting this latest superfood or this latest nutrient, then you can end up writing a shopping list that's 100 miles long or taking a million different supplements trying to get it. This is missing the point because nearly everything provides some benefit. And if you look at a study that says this can raise testosterone by 10% or it can lower stress by 5% or whatever, that might sound really impressive, but the truth is that that's only a very small effect. And when you're looking at the 
bigger picture and you consider that you have hundreds of other things all making an effect on your mood and your testosterone and your energy as well, you realize it doesn't have a huge impact. And what's most important is to focus on the bigger picture, getting a broad range of nutrients from nutrient dense foods that aren't highly processed and getting a wide variety of foods as well. That's the best way to make sure you're getting all these nutrients that are gonna make sure that you recover better, build more muscle, have more energy for the gym, sleep better, maintain a better hormone balance, heal better, all these things. So you wanna make sure you're getting a wide range of different foods. And it is variety that matters too. There's a fantastic book called Peak, which I highly recommend if you're interested in this kind of thing. And there he talks about the microbiome. In other words, the bacteria that live inside the human body and that contribute to all sorts of important functions. They produce enzymes that help us to break down our food. They help us to produce neurotransmitters and hormones. These rely on the foods we eat once again in order to perform their best. They literally consume those things and then produce beneficial waste products and they break down things that we don't want. You can make sure you're consuming live culture, eating lots of fiber and lots of fermented foods, but actually the very best way it seems to improve your microbiome is to just get a wide range of different foods. The more varied your diet, the stronger your microbiome and your gut bacteria are gonna be. And we can think of this a little bit like gardening. When you're gardening, you can either try and kill off the aphids and the bugs you don't want by using a harmful pesticide. But what this unfortunately does is it harms many other creatures and plants that you actually want in your garden. So the far better way to get rid of aphids is to attract things you do want to your garden, like ladybirds. Ladybirds consume aphids. And so by keeping a ladybird garden within your garden to attract them, you can create balance in that ecosystem and your gut health is very similar. In short, the human body is just far too complex to try and hack in this kind of really specific way. So instead, we just need to get that wide range of different sources and let our bodies do the rest. Bio wife. With that said, there are a bunch of different supplements that I do recommend simply because we know enough good about them and because it's really hard to get them in the diet naturally. But the key thing about these supplements that I'm gonna recommend and that I think anyone who trains really intensively and has a very busy schedule could benefit from is that they are things we can acquire naturally in our diet. And furthermore, they're things that we probably would have eaten more of during our evolutionary history than we do today. And a perfect example of this is collagen. Here I have pure collagen enzymes that I can add to a coffee or to some milk. And this is something that we would have eaten a lot more of back when we were hunter-gatherers because you get collagen from all the sinewy tendons and ligaments and bits of bone that you get when you eat an animal. And of course, when we killed animals, we didn't just walk off leaving all the bits that were a bit yucky because beggars couldn't be choosers. These days, we cut off all the nice bits of meat and we leave behind all of the collagen, which actually is really important. So collagen is synthesized in the body from glycine, lysine, and proline. These are amino acids, but the problem is that most of us aren't consuming enough of these, with the average person falling three to five grams short of their daily glycine quota. This leads to impaired collagen production. What's worse is that if you get a lot of your protein from meat, then you'll be consuming large amounts of methionine. Methionine is good in small quantities, but like so many things, too much of it, and in the wrong balance, can increase levels of the harmful homocysteine, leading to all kinds of issues. This gets worse if you're low in folate, which again, lots of people are. The good news is that glycine can counteract many of the negative effects of methionine and homocysteine. So this is how the body likely would have naturally balanced itself out. And of course, collagen is what our bodies use to repair tissues like tendons and ligaments. And athletes who take collagen, therefore, have been shown to experience less injury, but also to be stronger and to feel healthier and in less pain when they're performing. Hey there guys, Adam from the future here. I just wanted to make sure it was absolutely crystal clear that you don't need any of this stuff. Getting protein shake and other supplements all can help you to get that maybe extra 5%, but this should not be the priority and it's certainly not a limiting factor. So if you don't have that stuff, if you haven't been training for a long time, if you can't afford it, don't fret. Make sure that your training program is dialed in first. With that being said, I'd probably be slightly less bulky if it wasn't for the creatine in the protein shake. And I probably would have missed, you know, a couple more workouts per month if it wasn't for the energy boosting strategies that I use. But like I say, all of this is optional and extra. It is not the fundamental. And you can get everything that you really need from food. So make that your priority and make the training your priority. Creatine. Creatine is best known for enhancing energy, specifically for bodybuilders and those kinds of athletes, because creatine is used to recycle used ATP. It converts ADP back into ATP. And this basically gives you just a little bit of extra energy before you need to switch to the aerobic energy system, allowing you to pump out like an extra repetition. 
But creatine has so many additional benefits. It's also been shown to boost brain function, which it does by increasing energy for the mitochondria, for the cells in the brain, because of course your brain also needs energy. In the same way, it's also been shown to enhance sleep and it might even be able to improve methylation, vitamin D, for all of the reasons that I've explained. And of course, omega-3, likewise, one of the overall best supplements that anyone can take. Also worth supplementing with if you're unsure if you're getting enough in your diet. I'm also experimenting with molecular hydrogen at the moment, and the research and studies and theories surrounding that just sound too good to be true. Personally, I haven't noticed any benefit myself, but I'll be sure to keep you updated on the blog. Another way that you can optimize your diet in the face of this complexity is via personalized recommendations. The simple fact is that a supplement that works for one person might be ineffective or even harmful for another person. So one option is to use a combination of trial and error, but this can be risky, confusing, and time consuming. Blood tests can help you to identify nutrient deficiencies, hormonal imbalances, and other issues. But how do you know where to start? Well, one option is DNA analysis. So by getting your DNA tested, you can find genetic predispositions that may leave you vulnerable to a range of issues. This seems to me like something that Bruce Wayne would totally do. Analyzing his own DNA, he could create a personalized supplement regimen to support his diet and optimize brain function and physical performance. So I've been working with Self Decode lately, which is a DNA analysis company that uses advanced AI to provide the most nuanced and informed recommendations based on your genes, based on a swab of saliva or a pre-existing DNA file from a site like Ancestry. You can find a link in the description below, and if you buy from there, I'll make a commission, so you'll be supporting the channel, and I'd greatly appreciate it. You can also use the discount code SHINITSKI15, and that'll give you a 15% discount. So recently, I was fortunate enough to speak to Self Decode's founder and CEO, Joe Cohen, and he told me how he used DNA analysis and his own informed approach to biohacking to improve brain fog and energy and to feel the best you ever felt. The, the, the DNA is, is the most valuable data about you, Getting the DNA kit, even if there was no company that was doing analysis, I think it would be a good investment anyway, just because yeah. you have it. It's like, you know, a piece of precious information. Uh, going forward, you know, people who want to improve, you, you, you got to know your DNA. You got to uh, use tools to help you on that journey. Uh, you know, especially with the software like Self Decode, uh, you know, smart software, it allows you to, you know, you don't have to spend uh, thousands of hours doing the research, you can just, you know, say, hey, okay, here's what the recommendations are. Let me, maybe I try this one. I haven't tried this one yet or this one. Let me start trying these, right? We release like a very in-depth report, new report every week, and we're going to go to twice a week. And so it's like this new, th this in-depth report about you as an individual. And um, so you go, it's kind of like this, uh, platform where to you know to decide what you should be trying first how to prioritize these so you don't spend uh 10 years uh 15 years biohacking like i did if you took if you take a look at let's say something like 5htp yeah uh, it does you know uh individuals who have more need for that because their system is you know their, their neurotransmitters and is more deficient in uh, in serotonin would do a lot better with that, right? And that could be game changing. What what is the ROI on what you're providing? The ROI, it could be massive. For me, it was very big. You know, I was somebody who had a lot of uh, health issues growing up. My body was not working well, and I knew it wasn't working well. I mean, as I got older, though, it got worse, not better. So, how, how do you say you feel now compared to how you felt? Yeah, before you started your biohacking, is is a noticeable. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a world of a difference, no question. For me, it, was, it had a massive, massive impact. I was, I was like, I couldn't work. I was, I, I couldn't do anything. I was disabled. Um, whereas, you know, uh, now it's like, I work 60, 70 hours a week. You know, being able to learn much faster. I learned. Um, I'm actually in Tel Aviv at the moment. I was able to learn Hebrew fluently in a year uh, oh, while cool. I was working 60, 70 hours a week. Yeah, it's actually a that's, language that's harder than Chinese. That's pretty impressive um, going. And, and you yeah. reckon that some of your biohacks have helped with the accelerated oh, learning no as well? Yeah, no question. Oh, wow. I would not have been able to do that. Uh, you know, it actually, this is a very interesting point. I was in Israel uh, when I was 19 and uh, for a year and a half. And I didn't learn any Hebrew during that time. 
and I was having brain fog and I was having uh, yeah. cognitive health issues. I wasn't even working. Another thing that I've been researching and experimenting with a lot personally lately is NAD plus or nicotinamide adenine nucleotide. Basically, this is a substance in the human body. It's a coenzyme and a cofactor that serves as an important element. It needs to be present for a lot of chemical reactions to occur throughout the body, in particular those that involve electron transfer between cellular functions. This in turn makes it essential for all kinds of crucial metabolic processes in the human body in much the same way that oxygen is. We couldn't live without it for more than 30 seconds and people like Dr. Simon Sinclair say that this was probably one of the most fundamental forces in the human body, one of the earliest aspects of our biology that evolved billions of years ago. So NAD plus is crucial for the production of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This is the most basic energy currency for human life and all life and it's what we basically burn sugar and fat in order to create. NAD plus also gets turned into NADH. NADH is crucial for the Krebs cycle as well as glycolysis, whereas NAD plus is necessary for the electron transfer chain. Without this, your mitochondria wouldn't function, you wouldn't be producing ATP, and like I say, you'd die. Likewise, if you've got a lower amount, then you're gonna have less energy, and if you have more, then you're gonna have more energy. But there's many more roles for NAD plus beyond this. In particular, NAD plus needs to be present for sirtuins to function. Sirtuins are a type of protein that carry out, once again, a number of crucial different roles in the body. They act as kind of like tags or markers that tell the body that certain molecules are ready for certain actions. And in particular, they help with the maintenance and the repair of DNA, which as you can imagine, is kind of crucial. It can prevent the shortening of telomeres, which is one of the biggest markers of aging. You can think of aging as the collective cumulative damage to DNA that we experience as we get older. And this in turn results in less energy, poorly functioning organs, wrinkles, etc. But by protecting our DNA better, we can live for longer. And studies show, at least in mice, that increasing NAD will drastically extend the lifespan. This has been achieved through a number of different supplements, such as the precursors to NAD, which are NR and NMN. These can be taken in supplement form, and in theory, they can boost our NAD. In fact, studies show that they do boost human NAD. Whether this translates to greater longevity in the same way it does for mice, we can't yet be sure. The thing is that NAD rises and falls throughout the day, triggered by all kinds of different things, from your diet to exercise, to other forms of energetic stress on the cells. Fasting can achieve this, it can increase NAD levels, so can heat exposure and cold exposure, and we deplete NAD throughout the day as we get more tired. Thus, NAD can also act as a kind of signaler, which triggers a bunch of other different processes. And for this reason, increasing NAD via supplementation or another method could also help us to once again regulate our circadian rhythms. And people such as Dr. Simon Sinclair suggest that by taking NAD, we can actually reset our body clock and overcome the effects of sleep deprivation or jet lag, which is very relevant to this discussion. And this is something I've anecdotally found myself dealing with a lot of sleep deprivation at the moment. Raising my NAD level seems to be one of the best things I've been able to do to cope with that. I'm not actually recommending that you supplement with NR or NMN. There needs to be a lot more human trials before I could recommend something like that. And at the same time, it's expensive and there are some worrying potential complications. We need more long-term studies before we can definitely say that it's safe and effective for humans. Like I say, many other things can increase NAD, such as fasting, heat exposure, and particularly high intensity exercise. Batman's already got the high intensity exercise covered. He might definitely consider incorporating fasting into his routine, as long as he timed it strategically so that he had the energy and the carbs when he needed them. Fasting doesn't have to be something you do at a set time every week or a set time every day. You can intermittently, intermittently fast. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting, guys. If you did, then please leave a like and share it around. That'll help me out immensely. What supplements or nutrients do you think are vital for optimal performance? Which of these topics would you like me to dive into in more depth in future? Like I say, if you're interested in using self-decode to get your own DNA analyzed, then you can find a link in the description down below and get that 15% discount, and I greatly appreciate it. Alternatively, you can read either of my books, the ebook and training program, Super Functional Training, which is an approach to training that incorporates everything from biohacking to training to improve your mobility, your fitness, your strength, your focus, your creativity, all these things at once. And Functional Training and Beyond, which is my print book, which is an introduction to functional training and how it applies to athletes and the general public. Either way, thank you so much for watching this one, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.